Imagine coming home after a really long day, stepping into your living room, and not even getting a simple hello, or an acknowledgement, or maybe even a simple embrace, because everyone, everyone's eyes are glued to the television screen like a moth to a flame. That was my reality, until I noticed that all of my furniture is facing the TV. My family was disconnected, lost in shows rather than each other. However, in a different house, where the furniture fosters face-to-face -face interactions, this same group of people transformed and blossomed, sharing laughter and engaged in each other, barely even noticing the TV. Hmm. This contrast really opened my eyes. The simple arrangement of our living room furniture has a profound effect on our conversations and our connections. Whether you live alone or with a partner or with your family, you probably have a space, a living room space, that you can transform to maximize human connection. On the other hand, if you live with roommates or if you live in a house where you're not allowed to move furniture around, then maybe this can still apply to you in the future. Because one day you will most likely have a place that you can call home and a family of your own. And it is important for you to know how your living room layout can affect the interactions that you have in your space. Time and time again, I've experienced how much of an impact this makes in our lives. And research shows how our current living room layouts have made us replace human connection for entertainment. So today I wanna to talk to you about the sustainability of traditional living room layouts. Mm. So that you can have a space that fosters human connection. But before we do that, first I'm going to tell you why our current living room layouts have are such a big issue. Mm -hmm. The effects that this has on the way in which we interact with each other and finally, how we can reclaim our living rooms for connection. Bam! That's an introduction. First, let's talk about the actual problem created by the disregard of traditional furniture layout. Our current living room layouts have become a problem because they encourage less human interaction. Mm -hmm. Since the invention of the TV, all of our living rooms are centered towards the TV. Originally, almost 100 years ago, our living rooms used to be a place of genuine connection. They were designed for social gatherings where families and friends could laugh and cry and engage with each other and have conversations, essentially make memories. However, with the television becoming our focal point, our living spaces have transformed. Furniture is now arranged to provide the best view of the screen, mm -hmm. often putting to a side face-to-face -face interactions. Mm -hmm. Today we're facing a crisis where our living rooms have become a place of disconnection, a place of isolation, a place where everyone is doing their own thing. And this is reflected in the way that we arrange our living room furniture. Now you may think, what's the big deal? I connect with my family while we watch TV shows or movies together. And I understand that to some extent because it is fun to watch TV together. However, an article by Times Now argues that while watching TV with your family can provide a sense of routine and comfort, it should not be yes. mistaken as quality time. Mm -hmm. Quality time entails active participation, emotional connection, mm -hmm. and meaningful interactions. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, our current living room layouts are a disservice to our relationships and just encourage us to have more and more screen time. Yeah. Now that we have seen how traditional living room layouts have changed to favor entertainment, 
Let's go over the consequences of this change. Yeah. The dominance of the TV in our living rooms and the way in which we now arrange our furniture has caused several consequences that have negatively impacted how much we connect with each other. I want to talk about two of these consequences. First, it reduces the quality of our conversations. When the TV is on, our attention is divided, and so mm -hmm. it makes it difficult for us to have real, meaningful conversations. Studies have shown that even having the TV as a background can significantly re reduce the quality of family interactions and cohesion. Second, the arrangement of your furniture around the TV can act as a physical barrier yeah. to interaction. Mm -hmm. Sofas and chairs facing the screen mean that we're often seated side by side rather than face to face. Yeah. Yeah. This setup can discourage social interaction mm -hmm. and reinforce the habit of turning to the TV for entertainment rather than towards each other. Mm -hmm. Some of you may say that sitting close to each other should be enough to have meaningful conversation. Mm -hmm. But I can assure you that looking and talking to someone it, like this is not a position mm -hmm. that encourages us to have valuable conversation. Mm -hmm. And as Louise Dockery, a design expert, said in 2020, of course it's nice to have a, uh, a, view, a comfortable viewing spot, but it's also important to have a space to sit and chat without the distraction of the TV. Mm -hmm. It disrupts easy conversation to have a line of seating facing nothing but a screen. That's true. Since the invention of the TV, we have changed the layout of our living rooms. And as a result, we have replaced human connection for passive consumption of content. Mm -hmm. So far, we've looked at the problems caused by the disregard of traditional furniture layouts mm -hmm. and how it has negatively impacted our human connections. But now here's the good news. I want to show you how you can reclaim your living rooms for connection. Yeah. Enhancing human connection in our living rooms involves reconsidering furniture arrangements to enhance face-to-face -face interactions mm -hmm. over screen time. Yeah. I know it is almost impossible and slightly unreasonable of me to ask you not to have a TV in your living room mm -hmm. because we use them and frankly, we need them. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show you how a living room focused on human interactions could look like. Notice how all of the furniture is facing each other and how there is still a TV in this living room, but it is not the focal point. Mm. Nora James in an article said, positioning sofas and chairs to face each other isn't just inviting. It's an open call for chatter and shared mm. moments. It's like setting up an invisible welcome sign and encouraging everyone to join in and engage. So whether today you wanna to go home and rearrange the furniture you already have, or in the future you're trying to design a new living room space, I encourage you to point all of your furniture towards each other and maximize the meaningful interactions that you have in this space. It does not matter what your living room looks like, or how much furniture you own, or even if there's a TV in it or not. But it is your job to create a space that is focused on connection and what really matters in life. It is your job to make it a place where people hold space for each other, mm -hmm. a place where everyone feels heard, a place of laughter, a place to create memories, and ultimately, a place that you can call home. Now we've gone through one of the many ways to create a more connection-focused space. And I encourage you to do your own research because you will be amazed at how, by how much your interpersonal relationships will be enhanced by this small change. Now let's sum everything up. TVs have taken over our living room spaces and changed the ways in which we interact with each other. This has negatively impacted the quality 
and the quantity of our conversations. By rearranging our furniture to point towards each other, we, re we reclaim our homes as places of connection and conversation. The television, while a valuable source of entertainment, should not be prioritized over genuine human connection. Mm -hmm. So let's take conscious steps to design our living spaces in ways that prioritize bonding, foster laughter, and promote a more unified home. Thank you.